Thank you. I hear me, I hereby call to order the meeting of the Community Relations Committee of the Board of Directors of uh, NYC Health and Hospitals for Tuesday, May 3rd, 2022. I now call a motion to adopt the minutes of the March 1st, 2022 meeting. Uh, let me poll each of you uh, for your vote. Dr. Katz? Yes. Dr. Martone? Dr. Martone? Uh, Sally Hernandez Pinheiro? Yes. Anita Kawatra? Yes. Uh, and Jose Pagan, yes. So the minutes are approved. Um, I want to start then by acknowledging the successful renomination of uh, by New York City Mayor Eric Adams of Dr. Mike, Dr. Uh, Mitchell Katz. The uh, board of directors unanimously have voted to continue his tenure as president and CEO of uh, the New York City Health System. It's a public benefit corporation. NYC Health and Hospitals, uh, the Board of Directors votes on and appoints the Health System President and CEO. Dr. Katz has served in, in this current role, in his current role since September of 2017. Throughout his tenure, Dr. Katz has financially stabilized the health system, closed a deficit of approximately $2 billion, invested in ambulatory care to ensure everyone has access to a primary care doctor, and led our health system through the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, Dr. Cassie's patients at Gotham Health at Guineer every week, and we just are very thankful to your continued service in the administration, Dr. Katz. So, congratulations. Thank you, Jose. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, so, scheduled to present annual verbal reports this evening are the following CAPs, uh, Cumberland, Elmhurst, Guineer, and Lincoln. Uh, also, please mark your calendars for the Board of Directors annual public meetings for fiscal year 2022. I encourage our CAP members to attend and provide testimony. These meetings will begin at 6 p.m. on the following dates and locations. For Queens, it's going to be Tuesday, May 10th, 2022 at 6 p.m. at Queens Hospital. For the Bronx, it's going to be Tuesday, May 17, 2022, 6, 6 p.m. at Lincoln. And for Brooklyn, it's going to be Tuesday, June 14th at 6 p.m. at Coney Island. Uh, speakers are, are asked to register in advance by writing or calling Ms. Colicia Hercules, Secretary of the Corporation, Corporation and the phone number is 212-788-3360, 212-788-3360. So I now turn, turn the meeting to Dr. Katz for his remarks. Go ahead. Thank you so much, Jose, and good evening, everybody. And we're, we're so happy that you were able to join us uh, for this meeting. Um, we are at a really critical transition point um, with the COVID pandemic in New York City, um, where we are really looking toward a future where COVID is a manageable disease and not one that overwhelms our healthcare system. Uh, while the number of cases of Omicron uh, continue to increase, and uh, just yesterday the city moved into moderate transmission, the hospitalization remains exceedingly low. Um, this morning uh, we had a total of five ICU patients uh, with COVID. We had under 40 uh, patients with COVID in the 10 hospital system. Uh, so we know that at least in a highly vaccinated uh, city where a lot of people have had prior uh, exposure to COVID, it seems that we can have higher rates of infection without having as high increase in death and hospitalization. Um, and we hope that that marks the future. We're all aware that it's unlikely the virus that we call COVID is going to go away. Uh, more likely, humans who are a very adaptable species are going to learn how to live with COVID. And I, I like to believe that we at Health and Hospitals are leaders in that. Um, as was in a new New York Times article this week, we are the only city where any person can call 
a number and 212 COVID-19 and be immediately hooked up with an emergency uh, medicine doctor or nurse practitioner, physician assistant, who will uh, assess the person's health uh, and be able to start them on either an oral drug called Paxlovid, which will be delivered uh, to their home, um, or a um, intravenous uh, monoclonal antibody, which we will make an appointment for the person um, to come and will arrange transportation. And that is available to every New Yorker, whether they are insured or not, uh, whether they are a patient in our system or not. Um, and that is a very unique thing. It doesn't exist in any other city in the US at the current time, although we're getting a ton of calls from other cities asking how they can set up a similar system. So uh, I, I see it as emblematic of uh, how we will go forth. I think especially for the community advisory boards in working with their hospital or ambulatory care center, a key question that we ask uh, all of our hospital and clinic people to think about is, what is the future of our system in a post-COVID world? We've learned a lot about which services can be delivered virtually, which ones can't, <coughs> which how to do distant monitoring, how to do use facilities in new ways, how to come up with new models of uh, care delivery. And uh, I hope that we not only see the end of the, the really awful COVID time, but that the system emerges stronger by having learned important lessons. And the community advisory boards are key sources of information, of recommendations, um, for how we evolve the hospitals uh, and our outpatient uh, ambulatory care centers to best meet the needs of our community. Um, so with that, uh, Jose, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Katz. I'm, I'm never tired of telling you thank you for everything you do for our communities and, and uh on our system so um and uh, i had a quick question connected to what you were saying on the on 212 covid 19 today so every call there gets routed then to us yes it's our it's our line um it, it can be either telephonic or it can be video um first just as you would at an office you would get a receptionist who would find out what you needed help uh, if you have insurance information, <coughs> you would collect it. If you're not already registered uh, in our system, because we are interested in billing insurance for people who have insurance, but if you don't have insurance, we will continue the call. We'll just note, okay, you don't have insurance. Uh, and then you'll be turned over uh, to the next uh, available virtual doctor, nurse practitioner. Uh, sometimes that might happen immediately. Sometimes someone might wait 10 or 15 minutes, but that's no different than it would be in an actual office or uh, a, a hospital setting. But yes, it's, it's, it's available to anyone telephonically or through video. Hello? Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Katz, uh, for that. So we will now hear from the four facilities presenting their verbal annual reports. Today's reports are brief they're they uh but they'll be focused and they'll be focused because we're exploring ways to make the reports even more meaningful to the caps and the crc committee we will continue to learn and fine tune so we can always continue to improve so each each presentation is a lot of five minutes and we are grateful for the work that went into preparing them thank you so much in advance to to all our speakers for their time and commitment to the system so let me begin with then cumberland uh corey evans Go ahead. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. First, I, I like to thank Dr. Katz, Mr. Nolan, and all of the Council of Cab Executive Board and members. Uh, Cumberland Gotham Health. 
completion of the the fake the fake project improving all aesthetics of cumberland external the fake expanded COVID operations due to COVID variant seven days a week the patient center medical home the PCMH CCE Quality Award recognizes the outstanding certified content expert or CCE who have been nominated for their work supporting practices with transformation and the maintenance of PCMH recognition. Successful Article 28 survey with the minimal findings. Article 28 is a New York State public health law that recognizes and regulates the, the accreditation of public health care facilities. Something like Joint Commission, but the, for the clinics, it's called Article 28. Implement, implementation of 4RI, interpreter units in the clinic for improved language interpretation service to our patients. The, VR, the VRI stands for Video Remote Interpreting which refers to research, reaching a language or ASL interpreter over a video call. VRI marries the benefits of face-to-face -face interpretation with the on-demand nature of overall the phone interpretation. The benefits of VRI, visual interpretation, immediate connection, high quality, qualified interpreters, privately, Private call, many languages are offered as well as sign languages. OASIS successful surveys for chemical dependency program. Donation, all Gotham sites received, donations Cumberland received, donations from Frontline Impact Project and Loop, the Lubeski Foundation for Healthcare Staff, Frontline Workers, such as snacks, beauty products. Some samples of what donated are listed below. Thank you for your report, uh, Mr. Evans. No, no, no. Ah, go ahead. Oh, I'm not finished. I'm, I'm yeah, sorry, sorry. Sir, should I, should I continue? Please, let's do so. Sorry to interrupt Oh, I'm you. sorry. The donation of clinical equipment for ALFA organization through Fancy Community Health Care Association of New York State donated hospital equipment to Gotham, which consisted of isolation gowns, exam gowns, adult diapers, latex gloves, various sizes, feminine products, walkers, canes, Hoyer lifts, and face shields. The LBTQ Health Index Certification Award for Cumberland COVID team recognized the Healthcare Heroes Showcase in Commodore Park. The community got together and nominated Cumberland as Healthcare Heroes. An article was written recognizing Cumberland and their hard work and dedication that was displayed during the pandemic to keep the community safe. The recognition ceremony was held in Commodore Park. A photo of some of Cumberland staff was taken and is currently on display at Commodore Park. The unveiling of the pediatrics paint by local artists, a mural was donated to Cumberland by local artists. Cumberland staff also took part and completed the mural with the direction front, front the artist. The mural is currently displayed in the Cumberland Pediatrics Department. And finally, finally raised over 5K for the breast cancer awareness. I also like to give a special thanks to Ms. Lewis, the CEO of Gotham, for her continued support of Gotham and Cumberland. The Community Advisory Board would also like to thank Ms. Clark, Senior Director, Mr. DaCosta, Director of Patient Relations, and their their continued support and leadership. And that concludes the my report for Cumberland. Thank you so much, Mr. Evans. Uh, any um, congratulations on the Patient Center Medical Home Recognition, by the way. And, uh, and uh, um, any questions from board members? Thank you, Mr. Evans. Let me move to the next one then. Uh, Thank Mr. you. Carlos Cortez for Amherst. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Uh, good
just want to uh, welcome everyone to the meeting. Uh, Dr. Katz, President Katz, uh, Board Chair, Mr. Pagan, uh, all the committee uh, members, as well as other distinguished guests. Um, congratulations to Dr. Katz on his continuing appointment. Um, I feel that in this uh, pandemic war, its continuity is most effective, and so. Uh, your leadership uh, has been outstanding and uh, very happy to see that you're continuing. So uh, it is a privilege and an honor for me to uh, present on behalf of the Amherst Hospital Community Advisory Board our 2021 report on the hospital's uh, activities. Uh, but before I start, I just want to really quickly say, uh, I don't know if our CEO, Helen Artiaga is on, but she just recently completed her first full year I think it was in March, and she's done a superb and outstanding job. And I want to really thank uh, Dr. Katz, uh, you know, Mitch, when he called me to inform me of his appointment, uh, I said I would trust his judgment and I was so happy that I was right. His, his judgment was impeccable. Um, you know, Helen, uh, I don't know if there are any other uh, women that had uh, facilities at HHC, but it is the first one, the first time that we have a, a woman heading uh, Elmhurst Hospital, and it's, she's done a fantastic job during the last past, this past year. So let me begin. Uh, for COVID-19, we've given nearly 120,000 vaccine doses to patients and our community members in addition, vaccinations have run five days a week and testing procedures six days a week. We have provided over 192,000 tests since opening in March 2020. Community partnerships have been uh, nurtured uh, with Voices, uh, Voices Latina, uh, Make the Road New York, Adipar, 82nd Street Partnership, uh, Common Point of Queens, the Elmer's Community Partnership and, and the Elmer's Corona Recovery Coalition, as well as other organizations uh, to share news about COVID-19 testing and vaccination, which has resulted in hundreds of additional vaccinated community members. As of today, over 99% of adults over age 18 are fully vaccinated in Elmhurst, Jackson Heights and Corona and over, excuse me, and over 92% are fully vaccinated in Corona. Elmer's was recently selected to present this work at the annual conference for American Essential Hospitals in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, this was done in June, 2022. We have also um, used these uh, partnerships to promote other hospital programs and services. And this is one of the reasons why uh, Helen Artiaga has been so effective. She's very well in tune with the community and its needs. Uh, since the pandemic, senior and clinical leaderships at Elmhurst have participated in over 100 town hall webinars and information sessions to educate the community about COVID-19 and the importance of vaccination. In the infra infrastructure and equipment, Elmhurst Hospital is an aging facility, um, as many others are, but we are in great need of capital investment and improvements. We have been working with our local legislators to secure funding for a number of projects, including an extended renovation of our um, J1 infectious disease clinic, which handles HIV and uh, other infectious diseases. There's a $5 million request for an expansion of the women's, uh, uh, excuse me, that was a $5 million. And there's also an expansion of the women's pavilion, which is uh, $50 million. And the greening of the hospital enhancement is $6 million. Uh, we're trying to improve our entrances to make them more effective and efficient. We have also received support of uh, $3 million through federal funds for the renovation of our labor and delivery unit to create a new birthing center to serve mothers and babies in Queens. In the uh, area of patient safety and satisfaction, our care experience team <clears throat> is working on a number of key initiatives to allow the organization to receive 
the Excellence in Person-Centered Care certification by the Plain Tree International, um, as well as other key uh, initiatives related to improving care at Elmhurst, including additional patients and guest services, uh, presence in, in, the, in the emergency department, um, improving uh, grievances, uh, closures, rates, and maintaining high H, H caps uh, scores. The CAP chair, uh, myself, of course, fully has participated in the care experience team. I'm a member of the strategic planning commi uh, committee and the patient family advisory council uh, in this effort to get certification under Plain Tree. Uh, the Elmhurst Care Experience Health Team uh, was also selected to present their in, uh, improvement strategy at the uh, Press Ganey National Client Conference in February uh, of this past year, 2022 of this year. <clears throat> More than 1,100 uh, health care facilities from across the nation attended that session. Uh, in addition, we have worked to increase our language access by getting an additional video iPads for clinical inpatient uh, units, making it standard uh, so that all units have three video units. We have also worked to increase efficiency of language access in outpatient areas by having direct lines for six major languages at Elmhurst, Spanish, Mandarin, Bengali, Korean, Nepalese, and Cantonese, and affecting 99% of patients in under 40 seconds. Um, some of our uh, areas of, of that we need to improve on uh, involve uh, long waits uh, for appointments, uh, the wait time and, and, and the perception of adequacy of care. Specifically, there's very long wait for appointments to certain specialties, including uh, dermatology, women's health, and gastroenterology. Uh, the Elmhurst administration is in the process of recruiting more uh, attending physicians to address this issue. There's also an issue with the wait times. Uh, once you are seen, uh, for example, at the ophthalmology clinic, uh, patients have had to wait uh, excessive hours, up to seven hours to see a specialist. Uh, in terms of visiting hours, we have current visiting hours from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, some of the community issues surrounding Elmhurst struggle is the struggle with risk factors for chronic uh, diseases like alcoholism and substance abuse, smoking, or diet, and lack of exercise and obesity. Our communities also lack sufficient parks, green space, and community centers to meet the needs of growing population. Uh, many of our communities also face significant socioeconomic challenges that lead to health disparities. Uh, there are vast cultural and linguistic barriers as well as legal issues relating to immigration status that uh, preclude easy access to healthcare services. Uh, but we could struggle to continue to struggle to, to address these issues as best as we can. Thank you very much for this opportunity to present these issues. Thank you so much, Mr. Cortez. And I, I, uh... I couldn't. I can. I can tell you that the board is aware of many of these issues, and and uh, and uh, they're the subject of conversation in 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 in, in many different settings. So, and then, uh, the, you know, and also just to say that I totally agree with your comments on on Helen Arteaga and the work that you mm -hmm. all have been doing. So, thank you so much. Any comments from board members? Um, I was interested. Actually, I understand where their specialties for which there is recruitment. And so there are um, long wait times for appointments. Um, the issue that's a little troubling is that during visits or given appointments, um, like at the ophthalmology clinic, you have a patient that would wait like seven hours. It seems to me that uh, you know some wait time is inevitable, but I don't know if it's a question of how appointments are scheduled um, or what it is, but I would appreciate some more feedback, um, not doesn't have to be today, but more feedback on what's causing the problem and what the solutions are. Um, I, I think uh, I, I think one of there, there's it's a combination of things. And I say this because uh, I'm the one that experienced that. Oh so, my. 
personal experience. What, it's not that you didn't see the specialist. Uh, we arrived at 930. Uh, we saw the specialist quite quickly. You know, initially, the, the, you know, not the, the specialist, but an attending physician there or, or a physician in training. And, and the service was excellent. Amazing. I, sh I should say really focus on this. The service was superb. Uh, because uh, it was actually my wife who needed to uh, get treatment. She went in for one particular condition and the specialist, after being seen by, an, uh, by a first doctor, when the specialist uh, saw her, about, that was about late 10.30, you know, close to 11 o'clock. Uh, the specialist came in later in the afternoon because, because he was uh, doing surgery in the morning. So about uh, one o'clock, he saw her and he discovered that she had an actually a, a more serious condition in, in the other eye, which was a, a leak in, in one of the, you know, iris in the eye. He was able to treat her with, with some laser surgery immediately. So we were thankful for that. It was just so great because, you know, it, it, it was something more serious than we thought. So then after that, you know, we had to wait again uh, so it, it wasn't like there was a lack of service. The service was support. I think what happens is that there's a large number of, of overbookings. And so there's a mm. large number of patients and not enough specialists. Like this person, the, the specialist, Dr. Barshikar at, at Elmer's, uh, comes out every other week on Wednesdays only. So there's not enough specialists to, to see patients. And so people have to wait to see him. But the, the service is outstanding. It's excellent. Uh, we just need more specialists. And the same thing is happening with uh, in other areas with sonogram techs. We uh, have to actually send out uh, patients to get sonograms. And I know that this is uh, an agency-wide problem, so and probably nationwide problem, uh, because we know that there are a lot of uh, professionals that have been leaving the medical field, uh, techs, nurses, and so on. Uh, anesthesiologists and, and psychiatrists. And so it's not an easy answer, but I certainly don't want to leave anyone with the impression that the service was poor. I think it's just that we don't have enough uh, staff and we have a lot of need, a lot right. of patients. Right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Cortez. And any any other questions or comments from board members? Um, so let me move on to the next one. Gouverneur, uh, Larissa Scheinberg. Hi, thank you very much for having me this evening to speak. Uh, my name is Larissa Scheinberg. I am the vice chair for the Gouverneur Community Advisory Board. Uh, it's Villa Ching is our chair. I'd like to start this evening by thanking Dr. Katz and the leadership as well of Gouverneur with Dr. Morris Gagliardi as Chief Medical Officer, Gotham uh, Ambulatory Site, and Susan Sales, CEO of the Gouverneur Skilled Nursing Facility, as well as the Community Relations Committee and New York Health and Hospitals for this forum, so that I can provide you with the highlights of the CAVS activities at Gouverneur Gotham Ambulatory Site and skilled nursing facility. Gouverneur Gotham Ambulatory Site provided 175,000 visits annually and has become a vaccination and testing site throughout the pandemic. During the testing, increasing the, uh, the increase, uh, I pardon, uh, apologize, demand for the testing increased during the surge, in particular the Omicron surge. When this, where the site tested more than 600 patients per day. Nearly 28,000 doses of the COVID vaccine were given as of mid-April 2022. The Gouverneur Skilled Nursing Facility has 295 beds, providing subacute re rehabilitation and 200 traditional long-term care beds. Throughout the last year, the Skilled Nursing Facility has continued to serve its long-term residents and keep them connected with their families. It has also returned over 600 patients to the community following rehabilitation. Uh, I would like to speak on COVID testing and vaccination. <clears throat> the site has maintained a testing site throughout the year with demand being variable. 
we have distributed at-home tests to patients and staff through the testing site, as well as oximeters. The vaccine was offered throughout the year with demand peaking for boosters during the Omicron surge. Demand has since diminished and the site is developing workflows to incorporate the vaccine into the practice. We encourage all staff to meet the full 2021 mandate and to get their COVID boosters. We also offer Moderna for adults 18 and up and Pfizer vaccine for children 5 to 11. <clears throat> COVID PCR and antigen tests for the SARS CoV 2 are available as indicated for all. Uh, skilled nursing facility residents as well as staff and over 20,000 tests were performed during the year 2021. <clears throat> we offer Pfizer COVID vaccines for all eligible residents and staff ages 12 years and older. For the year 2021, we conducted 24 vaccine clinics with a total of 1,310 doses given. Uh, there are no major infrastructure concerns currently for the program at the Gouverneur main site. The CAB has been engaged in seeking funding for underdeveloped spaces on the first floor, where consideration for that build out have included an urgent care, which I have to say is very needed for the community, the relocation for the World Trade Center program and or physical therapy, and a development of the Diabetes Center for Excellence. The Community Advisory Board is also interested in funding to develop the second floor of the Judson site, which in its current state is completely unusable. As regarding the Gouverneur Skilled Nursing Facility, the facility recently received New York State Department of Health approval for home dialysis. Uh, this is a terrific program because the service will allow the residents to receive dialysis in the building rather than traveling multiple times per week to off-site locations. Construction is expected to start later this year. The facility has recently installed automatic entry doors to all the resident units, allowing for easier access on and off the resident unit. For patients and staff safety, the Clinton Street Courtyard was also renovated to fix drainage concerns. Uh, regarding Gouverneur Ambulatory Site, <clears throat> patient safety is taken very seriously and the site undergoes proactive evaluation for structures, policies, procedures, and workflows to minimize risk to patient safety. Patient satisfaction scores have steadily improved with the site at or above average regarding scores as compared to other H&H &H sites. The most recent Prescani score on likelihood of recommending care provider, considered the single most important indicator, was at 92.0. So we're very proud of that. Uh, during the pandemic, patient satisfaction scores have been affected by the lack of activities and I'm referring to the skilled nursing facility programs. Entertainment, the facility providing residents with iPads for watching movies and listening to music. The iPads are also used to facilitate visits with their loved ones when that was restricted. And we continue to use the press gainy to conduct satisfaction surveys with our residents and their families. The latest uh, score showed an increase from 72 to 75 percent. Students are quite pleased with our housekeeping and linen services. Uh, when it comes to the Gouverneur Ambulatory site, the site has recorded only 57 complaints and grievances of the 3,215 compliments, 21. A year we had 172,950 visits, resulted in a rate of 0.33 complaints per 1,000 visits and 18.6 compliments per 1,000 visits. Most common complaints circled around communication and staff attitude opportunities to site, we uh, use that for opportunities to cite and coach staff 
on the eye care values to improve their patient experience. The facility received only 11 complaints and grievances and 184 compliments in 2021, year where there was 104,243 patients uh, that visited a skilled nursing facility, uh, which resulted in a rate of 0.1 complaints per 1,000 residents. Most common complaints surrounded communication, peer reviews, and meeting personal preferences. The interdisciplinary team is addressing complaints and the residents and the families are satisfied with the actions taken. Uh, the Gouverneur Gotham Ambulatory Site regarding health equity. <clears throat> the site has developed a steering committee along with CAB membership to proactively identify, investigate, and bring awareness to inequalities affecting our patients, our staff, in our community with intentional impl implementation of thoughtful practices, itinerary, and innovative strategies to reduce these inequalities. Membership involvement has been very much appreciated by the staff at Gouverneur. Uh, overall, our summaries and objectives for the year 2022, the advisory board has focused on three major areas this year. As representatives and advocates for patients, we continue to bring attention to the administration for the need to improve outreach for COVID boosters and scheduling for the appointment in a timely manner. Time for appointments in many departments has risen to unacceptable levels. After communicating this to our administration, the clauses were reached or researched by Times have become approved at the facility. Encouraged after re reaching with the new Director of Growth and Community Affairs, Mr. Rafael Rodriguez Dominguez, uh, the CAB is looking forward to partnering with Rafael to facilitate an increase in community outreach that we as CAB members feel has been lacking at Gutenberg. His office, we hope, Will be one more additional needed research source uh, to assist the board in our goals for the community. I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. Thank, thank you so much for your report, uh, Ms. Scheinberg. Uh, any questions from board members? No, I just say 3,200 compliments is like extraordinary. So congratulations on that. Um, and I'm I'm really happy that. Uh, you have a new director of growth and community affairs because community outreach is so critical for the hospital system as a whole. Absolutely. He was so enthusiastic um, and very proactive. He met with the uh, CAB during one of our meetings as well as spending time with our executive board um, afterwards. And he has offered uh, his, uh, his support and communication with him. He's very responsive. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. So let me then move on now to Lincoln, uh, Gandhi Ambrose. <clears throat> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Is good afternoon. Chairman of uh, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Community Advisory Board, you say Lincoln. All right. Thank you all for having us. Um, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Kell for his leadership. I also congratulate him for his uh, uh, reappointment. I also say a big thank you to Mr. Christopher Rocker, our CEO, for all his uh, support he's been providing to uh, the CAM. Uh, <clears throat> as a member of Lincoln Community Advisory Board, we join with the administration to advocate and serve as the con con conduit for com community and the hospital to achieve and provide the best possible <clears throat> excuse me, care to our community resident. The hospital administration kept us informed of all new endeavor, initiative, and program. We are here as a team to work together to better serve our community needs. 
the hard work that Lincoln has done during the COVID-19 pandemic was, special, was exceptional. Even today, the hospital continued to pro prevent the spread of COVID-19 <clears throat> by providing masks on screening open point of entry to, of our facility, encouraging and maintaining social distancing through all community outlets, Continue to offer COVID testing and vaccination six days a week. Schedule patient visitation to continue to monitor contact tracing to keep patient staff and the community safe. Patient center <clears throat> initiative that bring up the moral of our community and enhance patient experience. <clears throat> Infrastructure and equipment. New radiology system installed, opening of new uh, birthing uh, simulation room, open uh, uh, recharge room, wellness resource, large staff, <clears throat> patient safety. New whiteboard created by uh, BF, uh, BFAC member were uh, installed. The lobby concierge is a place to navigate and answer patients' visitor questions, officially receive baby-friendly re de designation. A speaker in installed inside and outside the entrance of the facility to provide smoothing, uh, soothing music, a mirror and veil in uh, OBGYN for Women International Day. All effort in initi is initiated in preparation to achieve the ultimate goal of the Plan 3 Person Center Care Certification. <clears throat> A frequent complaint raised by a patient, resident, to the guest uh, relation department, which provide a centralized mechanism for patient and visitor to express their concern and provide feedback through suggestion and complaint. Services recovery are conducted to remedy all complaints. All grievances are investigated by the chief of the service and respond to the uh, respond to in accordance with the CMS regulation. The top three patient complaint and re uh, remediation taken are uh, uh, effective communication, lost property, and attitude and inappropriate behavior. Effective communication, remediation, nursing communication improve contest system-wide. The patient experience team meet with the head of the department, leads of the leaders of the care area, and line staff through various improvement committees meeting, unit order, executive town hall, and training to improve effective communication. Lost property remediation. To, to decrease lost property complaint, we began a steering committee to identify gaps and implement a strategy best practice action to our uh, process and create a new policy and procedure to reduce this area of complaint. Continue to reinforce in-service staff on the process compliant. Attitude and appropriate behavior, uh, inappropriate behavior. Remediation. Identify staff are subject to eye care and others hospital retraining. When applicable, disciplinary action issue. Lincoln Hospital <clears throat> continue to impact the community by showing that we care physically and mentally about the healthcare need. We are not just serving our community in these four walls, but we go beyond. 
we celebrate our holiday, our victory, and more. Um, completed a successful joint commission survey, hosted a food drive for family of the community for Thanksgiving, hosted a tree light tree lighting ceremony with the community, hosted a toy drive for the children of the community, performed first gender affirming surgery within the Pride Health Center, hosted a Black History Month celebrate celebration with Mayor Eric Adam, gunned down life up, invited to meet with President Biden to address gun violence, collaborated with the regional director of, the C, of CVS Pharmacy in the Bronx to improve delivery of um, medication to the community. The CAP, the, the CAP with help of the administration will continue to recruit members and work closely with the administration to advocate for Lincoln Hospital to provide state of the art healthcare to our uh, communities. A huge initiative that will take that will be taking place under the leadership of Mr. Uh, Christopher Rocker is the building of the new 10-story ambulatory building being constructed on the ground lawn. A building with which will bring state of the art healthcare to our community where we can assist by helping with uh, connecting with our community, a state, stakeholder, and our outreach. To further let you know about the uh, wonderful initiative and how it will provide to our community the best possible healthcare, is our co, uh, our CEO, Mr. Farrakhan. Thank you, Ambrose. Appreciate it. So really, really quick, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Dr. Katz, uh, audience. So uh, we're very excited. We uh, engaged with a architectural firm called Gensler, and uh, we finalized those uh, schematics. We know that it will cost somewhere between $550 million to $600 million. It's roughly between 10 and 12 stories high. It'll be two, uh, 300 plus thousand square feet. And this will enable us to provide great quality of care, more great quality of care for our community, but in one building. One building housing all ambulatory services, including ambulatory surgery. So uh, we're excited about it. It has not. <clears throat> It has not been funded yet, but that is that's my job to try and get all the funding for it, uh, and this will help out our community uh, as well as free up space in our existing building, which everyone knows it was built in 1975, and we really need to um, de-stress the building right now. So, more to come. We're very excited. Uh, Doctors, nurses, all of our staff are excited about it. We keep on talking about it. So uh, I love it. And uh, that's the end of our presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And that, that sounds very ex like a very exciting initiative. So yes. just a lot of money to find now, right? So, <laughs> hey, uh, any questions from board members? Okay. I should have said that Robert Nolan couldn't join us today, but he's doing great work that actually impacts our community. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, and on that note, any old business to come before this committee? Any new business? So hearing none, I call the motion to adjourn this meeting. Thank you so much for all your support and please stay safe and be well. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Be well. Good evening.